led way. Um, on the right hand side here, the rich list, which is the Sunday Times rich list, we actually went in and rated our own bars as all being in the rich list because they're so full of cocoa. And then we sponsored the Sudoku sections as square by square, green and blacks and Sudoku. I was just asked to say a few words today about the impact of the, um, the credit crunch, which clearly we're all reading about and hearing about and talking about to death. But it is worth talking about that, I think, as a premium chocolate brand. How's that affecting us? Um, I saw some data last week. In, People are eating as much chocolate as, as ever. In fact, I think they're probably drowning their sorrows by eating more chocolate at the moment. But it is interesting, in the US and the UK, people are trading down slightly from the more premium lines to the more um, cost-conscious end of the market. So at Green and Blacks, we think um, you know, we, we will be affected, as most businesses are. But the trick, I think, is to just adjust the way you run the business. Don't throw everything out but just perhaps run it in a, in a tighter way. So accept the fact that um, tough times are with us. Budget accordingly. So rather than being in denial, probably do accept the fact that the growth rate will slow, albeit for hopefully a short period, because uh, we can't deal with macro factors like the economy. Um, but I think one of the big mistakes businesses sometimes make is they, they know it's going on, but they don't make the adjustments. So just tackle it head on. Um, clearly, it's a time to run the business more tightly. For us, that's not, unfortunately, well, it's not um, about losing people, which is, um, which is good. So we're not trying to make cutbacks there. Uh, we will probably spend less on marketing um, over the next few months because we just have to operate a business and deliver our profits. And if sales growth is slightly softer, we have to still, like we all do, hit our numbers. Um, but it's been an interesting test for me and team, having had, we've had kind of just year, year in, year out, we keep growing and growing and growing, which is a great place to be. But actually, it's a good sense check for the business. It forces you to just rethink everything, probably like we had to when we repositioned the brand. And when you go through line by line on the marketing budget, there's always something that, I mean, I always say to my team, two things, if it was your own money, would you do it? And it's amazing how they go from being dying in a ditch over something to, well, maybe I'm not quite sure. Um, and it happens as a good test for, for anybody uh, doing that. And also, I think the other way of thinking about marketing activity is, you know, Will the world be you know, an inferior place? Will our world fall apart if we don't do this? And there are a few marketing activities that we all do, that we do them out of routine and familiarity, but will we really suffer if we don't do them? It's probably a, the odd thing that you can cut out. So don't pull the marketing budget entirely, but I would, my advice would be very ruthless about how you spend it and um, cut your cloth accordingly for, for the times that we're now in. Um, to give you an idea about how we tackle things like this at Green and Blacks, we also think that rather than just being depressed along with the rest of the nation about the credit crunch. Why, why can't we apply a green and black sort of logic to it? So this, these are just some visuals that were done by our, uh, my guy at the ad agency, who, and he did these in about half an hour. But, um, so enjoy the crunch, which is our butterscotch bar. The UK cost of living is now £13,401.79, uh, which is the cost of a bar of green and blacks, because certain things cannot be given up in these hard times. And there is a visual of most of our customers um, cupboards at the moment so even from baby food to all of their food uh, everybody has gone value and economy but you really can't trade down on green and blacks because once you've discovered green and blacks there genuinely is no compromise and no going back so these are a few things that you know we, we play about with and run but it's actually I think just to demonstrate that this is a brand that's kind of you know, it, it's with it's with it it understands what I we understand what our customers are, are going through and um, £1.79, there's probably bigger things that you can cut back on in life, but still enjoy green and black. So trying to bring a more light-hearted tone to it. I um, just want to wrap up with a few reflections um, that I would make having, having worked on the brand. The big thing that green and black has um, is an idea. There's an idea behind this. It's high-quality organic chocolates. There are so many businesses that, um, and you see most of them on Dragon's Den, that turn up and... However well they present, you think, well, is this any different to something I've seen before, or is there really an idea behind this, or is it just nice packaging and a nice story? And ask the hard question, you know, have I really got something that's um, genuinely different? And more often than not, I think we talk ourselves into things being different, when actually to the outside world, they're probably not different enough. Clear target audience. Um, Green and Blacks now, we have a 7% share of the chocolate market in the UK on the big bars of chocolates, which is a good performance. But 
it's fair to say, you know, we, we don't ever aspire really to have a 25% share because we know that Green and Blacks is, is not for everybody. It's priced at a certain level. It's of a certain type of taste. Organic isn't to everybody's liking. So we know what we do and we're very focused about that. And I think we just ex expect uh, and accept the fact that um, there will be instances where some people don't, don't like what we do. And provided you're prepared for that, um, I think that's a perfectly okay of working, way of working. Um, but always stay true to what you can genuinely do. Style of marketing, it's about off smaller budgets and we, we do spend quite a bit less than our competition just being joined up in every area really so every interface the customer has with the brand whether it's the packaging the websites if they see an ad or if they get a sample it just needs to look coherent and there are some examples of other brands I think you know the guys at Innocent Smoothies who we've kind of we know pretty well have done that fantastically well uh, I think First Direct as a bank do it very well not getting into their charges or anything like that but their marketing presentation it's a brand that's targeting a, a clear audience and at every touch point it's thought through and it looks um, you know, very, very well delivered. And also, you know, very important not to try and... Uh, Rome isn't built um, in a day. You have to try things out, you know, start things small. And the way we try and do new product development is we budget a very, very low amount for the sales of a new product when we launch it. So we set it up to succeed rather than to fail, which is different to how a lot of companies do product development. People set themselves far too high a target in the first couple of months. If they don't meet them, everybody gets very upset and starts you know, delisting the products before they've had a chance. We start them out slow, we accept there's a cost to trying things. But if, they, if something doesn't work, it doesn't mean that the whole company is in trouble. We haven't bet the whole brand plan on one initiative. If it does work and we see some positive signs, our approach is to take that as the best ever research we could do, fine tune something if it needs fine tuning, and then we really put the foot down and start spending marketing money behind it to make it go faster but we like to do in-market testing rather than sit and do reams and reams of pre-market um, research and testing. No better test than to actually get it out there in a small way, work with it, build it up as a case study, and then, then roll out from there. And the final message for you today is um, marketing isn't um, complicated. There is some science that we put behind it, and as a profession, I think you know, we need to be more measurable. But... We do have a terrible habit of overcomplicating things and hopefully one of the things you've picked up from, from the Green and Black story is just the simplicity of the idea and the fact we've not really done cutting edge trendy marketing. For one of the, we've done some very basic stuff but done it in our way and done it with real conviction. And um, intuition's a powerful thing and too often we, um, we don't back our own judgment. We ask everybody else what they think. But my advice to you would be, uh, you know, trust your... Trust your gut feel sometimes. Just do it in a way that allows you to try things out and then expand thereafter. So I hope some of those insights are useful. Um, thank you very much for inviting me here today. I think the plan is now for, if there are any questions, I'm very happy to take them. There are a couple of people with roving mics, so if you could draw your, put your hand up so that they can come and find you. Uh, we'll take a few questions, and then Alice is going to say a few words before we go for our wine and chocolate sessions. Hi. Um, Mark, you mentioned that, um, that you, you regard yourself as a discovery brand. What happens after you've been discovered? Um, well, we have, we have very, very high levels of loyalty, which is good. I mean, I think it's only good being a discovery brand if when people find you, you're worth finding, really. So we find that the repeat levels are very, very good. The area that I think we could do better at and we're working on is how we... Once somebody kind of joins the Green and Blacks club, so to speak, how we keep talking to them. Um, we are, I think, very good at delivering exciting new products, um, good quality chocolate, time in, time out. We're not as good as we could be at keeping the, the interaction going with those customers, which clearly is where digital marketing can outperform you know, most other media. So we're a bit old-fashioned, really. We do a lot of print advertising and sampling, and um, we should probably move into the... 21st century at some point with a bit more digital work but that one-to-one -one customer management is important but do you find that discovery is something that will it, you'll always be a discovery brand or, or what do you think you'll become um, as you mature well we will never be we'll never be quite the discovery brand that i think we have been as as we scale up but we certainly we want to avoid looking like a big corporate brand i think would be our test